For the last few years, I've been going through different 3D scanners, trying to find one that does what I need it to do without paying $15,000. I found one a few months ago in the Einstar. Since then, a handful of companies have reached out to me asking if I want to review their scanners, and I've said no until a few weeks ago when RevoPoint asked me if I wanted to review their new Morocco scanner. I was intrigued. It is fully self-contained. No computer, no wires, no plugs, just a handheld scanner. Neat. So I decided to give it a shot and see where it can fit into my growing fleet of scanners. I asked some of my viewers what they wanted to know about it, and the most common answer was, is it better than the Einstar? Let's find out. I have a Revo Point Pop that I've talked about in the past. It's not bad for the price, but it feels more like a hobbyist toy than an actual tool. You can get decent scans if you're careful and your part is the right size, shape, luster, and color. I don't use it anymore. It's at the bottom of my list of usefulness for scanners. They've had a few newer scanners come out in the meantime, most recently the Morocco. The Morocco is $1,300 or $1,600 for the 32 gig version, although they do have the early Kickstarter discount price of 40% off or 35 or whatever. If it's anything like their other scanners, it'll be on sale and will never actually sell for its list price. I don't care for this pricing strategy. It feels dishonest. It's like the furniture stores that are always going out of business. Just tell me how much it costs. This is an all-in-one scanner, or more accurately, an Android device slapped to the back of a scanner. It has some pretty cool features, like this screen can flip up so you can see yourself while you're scanning your face. I don't know why scanner companies always show face scans. Is there a big market out there for scanning faces? It's not super intuitive. There are only two buttons. One of them has a play icon. This other one is unlabeled. It's the power button, apparently. It has a couple of neat features, like this here will attempt to remove the table underneath your scan. It also has two distance settings, one near and one far, so you can scan large things and smaller things. Most of the stuff I do is medium to large, so we're going to focus on that. I have that POP scanner, but also have an Intel scanner and the Einstar. The discounted price of the Morocco is about the same as the Einstar, and since this is my go-to scanner, it is the defending champion, and we will be comparing the Morocco to that. <laughs> I've long dreamt of making a carbon fiber roof for the S600. I don't know if I ever will, but if I do, I will need a scan to start with. I've tried this a few times before, once with the Intel L515 LiDAR scanner, once with the Revo Point Pop, and once with my iPhone, and none of them would ever do it. The problem is all the points are too far apart from each other. I need to get the top of the windshield, specifically the top surface here and the back surface here, and then I need to get the top of the roll hoops, and I need this flange back here. Ideally, I'd also get the top of the door so I can figure out where the door ends. Every time I've tried this, I lose tracking between the windshield and the rear, usually in this no man's land of the top of the door. I've also noticed on some of the cheaper scanners that if you start at one place and scan in a circle, your scan won't line up when you make it back to where you started, which means it's just adding up a bunch of little errors along the way. This is a good test because there are a lot of different things here. There's chrome, soft black, paint, aluminum. There are areas with features and some without many features. And there's one big loop so we can see how well they line up at the end, which should give us a pretty good sense of overall accuracy. We'll start with the soft top on since that will give us some surface to connect all the pertinent points. It doesn't have much specific geometry, but that should gauge which one of these can track flat-ish surfaces. The Einstar is very quick. It doesn't have a problem tracking any of these surfaces, even the chrome, which is kind of surprising. One thing to note here, the better your computer, the better this thing is at keeping its tracking. My laptop will throttle itself if it's not plugged in, and it is noticeably slower and worse at scanning, which is why I always drag out the power bricks with it. The feedback on scan quality is excellent, giving color-coded scan as you go, and when I get all the way around back to the center of the front, it lined up nearly perfectly. The Morocco was noticeably slower, it had some trouble keeping its tracking, but it's manageable if you're steady and you take your time. The big drawback here is that sometimes when it loses its tracking, it doesn't know it, so it'll start throwing garbage data on top of your good data. It's not always good at telling you it's doing this, and the small screen doesn't make it easy to see this. It did scan all of the same surfaces, but when it got around to the front, it didn't quite line up. I took the top off and tried again. This is kind of on hard mode since there's less geometry to follow. The Einstar did great, except the top of the windshield took some careful movement, which is not surprising. There's not a lot of geometry up there. The Morocco had a really hard time with the top of the windshield. I added targets to the top to help the scanners along. I generally don't like these things. You always need way too many of them to be of any use, and they're only marginally useful. Both scanners did a bit better with these, but not significantly. I found that both of them really like hard edges and clear geometry. Rather than markers, it would probably be a lot more effective to tape a bunch of Hot Wheels cars to the windshield. That way the scanner would have geometry to follow, and then you could just delete the cars in the scan later. Plus, in the end, you have a bunch of Hot Wheels cars instead of having to remove tons of stupid little dots. <laughs> 
One of the biggest issues with scanning in general is tracking. You move the scanner along a surface and it picks up new points relative to old points, but it has to always see some of the old points so it knows where the new ones are in relation. This is why it's hard to go around corners. Both of these scanners have advantages over previous scanners to help mitigate this problem. I suggested in a previous video that Einstar should have a feature that allows you to undo the last 10 seconds or so of scanning. Say you're scanning something big and you get towards the end of it and it just jumps around and starts dumping garbage data all over your good data. It would be great if you had a button that just made it forget the last 5 or 10 seconds of scanning. The Morocco has that. It's this button right here. And it's pretty great. It's definitely a need to have thing because the Morocco jumps around kind of a lot. It'll tell you when it loses its space for sure, but it seems to lose its space and not know it a lot. The Einstar is much better at keeping its tracking and knowing where it's lost its tracking. It'll start beeping at you and flashing, and you just press the pause button, you go back to a known area and press the play button, and it gives you a chance to make sure it's in the right place before you press the play button again and start scanning. When I say pause or play button, I'm talking about this middle button on the back here. The software that comes with the Einstar is also pretty good at stitching together multiple scans. It's gotten a lot better too, it loses its tracking a lot less than when I first got this. The Morocco has a feature where you can take a bunch of still shots instead of one continuous scan. It does make it easier to make sure you don't lose your tracking, but it takes a lot longer than just scanning. It was kind of helpful when I scanned the back of the engine. It's a feature that definitely has some use cases. The Morocco also comes with a lot of things that make it easier to get good tracking. Markers, marker sheets, a turntable with marker sheets, some plastic to sort of block out whatever you don't want to scan. I scanned a few things with both scanners, including the back of the Viper engine and the oil pan, all with pretty similar results. In all cases, the Einstar got a better scan. But the truth is, the scan still wasn't perfect. I sent it to the company that makes transmission adapters, and they said it didn't have the fidelity to make a new adapter. But I think if I had the engine out of the car, I could get that scan. The Morocco may also be able to get the data, but it would certainly take much more effort. They're both not exactly set up for this kind of detail work. The truth is, if you're doing some serious reverse engineering, you still need to spend a lot more money on a scanner. All of these companies advertise accuracy numbers that, frankly, seem made up. The Morocco has a lot of example scans, and I have no doubt that you could scan all of these things. The question with a scanner isn't what you can scan. The question is, or questions are, is it dimensionally accurate, and is it a pain in the ass? The Morocco is more of a pain than the Einstar, and it's decidedly less accurate. The Morocco is convenient. It's a lot nicer to just carry this out to the garage than it is to carry out the Einstar, the cables, and the laptop, the power supplies, and plug it all in. If you don't have a powerful laptop, it's even more of a pain. And it is pretty cool that RevoPoint managed to get a whole scanner and software all in one handheld thing. But you do lose something with it. If you don't have the processing power of a full computer, the scanning is slower, the tracking is slower, and the accuracy is worse. The Morocco seems like a deal because you don't need to plug it into a computer, but let's be honest, you already have a computer. You kind of need one to do anything with the scans. Probably a decent one if the scans are large enough and have enough detail. I've loaned my Einstar out to friends who only have Mac computers and I have to give them the laptop with it, which is kind of annoying. I reached out to Einstar and asked them, actually told them, you need to have a Mac version of this software. They told me they are working on one and it's supposed to be out sometime next year. For right now, if you don't have a Windows computer or you can't drag it out to wherever you're scanning, maybe the Morocco is the right choice. But for me, I can't think of a situation where I wouldn't just use the Einstar. I should note here that RevoPoint gave me this scanner to review, two of them actually, but I paid for the Einstar with my own money, and I don't have any other sponsorships or affiliates with these companies. There are links in the description to both of these products, but I don't get any money or anything if you click on them. There are already a lot of reviews on the Morocco. Most of them came out before pricing was even announced. RevoPoint seems pretty aggressive with their marketing. I wanted to like this, I thought I would, but the price is high, and I can't really recommend it for the kind of things that I do. It used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show. Now you just have to impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. All hail the algorithm. <laughs>